Well, hello, and welcome to the first ever Cherry Party. I'm your host, Dawn Jackson Blattner. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and author of The Superfood Swap. Now, of all superfoods, one of my absolute favorites, cherries, cherries. So I'm the perfect host today of what's called the first ever cherry party. And uh, have you ever been to a cherry party? Um, me neither, because this is the first ever. Uh, so what are we gonna do at a cherry party, okay? We're gonna celebrate all things cherries. And in order to do that, I actually invited a very special guest to have this cherry party with me. Uh, he is the CEO of Shell and Fresh. His name is Tom Riggin, and he's going to talk all about, um, I'm hoping, right, uh, his typical day, like what he does, and then tell us about cherry season, tell us about uh, you know, how many people are buying cherries, uh, talk to us about how to use cherries, uh, and so, I mean, here's the thing. I'm a big fan and I always have them in my fridge when they're in season. So I know one of the biggest barriers to people uh, actually using cherries uh, is that they don't today. Oh, do I have Tom Riggin coming in? Oh my gosh, let's welcome him to the cherry party, everybody. Oh, how exciting. Oh my gosh, hello. It's nice to see you, Tom. Don, how you doing? Good. Of course, I have my disco ball because this is a cherry party, you know? Well, I forgot to bring my dance shoes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, you know what? Uh, one of the first things that I uh, said to everybody is like, what are we going to expect from a cherry party? Because this is like the first ever. Uh, and it's really celebrating all things cherry. But before we begin, I thought it would be cool to have a pronunciation lesson, if you will. Okay? So... Shellin fresh. What do you think? Well, first of all, I usually don't party at 9 a.m. But <laughs> I'm going to oh, do it because it's cherries. We're going to party. Yeah. So Shellan. So <clears throat> Shellan comes from Lake Shellan, and it's pronounced Shellan. It's not Shellan. It's not Chilean. It's Shellan. Okay. Shellan. Shellan. Like shell and Shellan. I mean, Lake Shellan. Yep. There, there's no better person to get a pronunciation lesson uh, from than the CEO of Shell and Fresh, Shellan Fresh. Shellan. 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 Shellan yep. Fresh. You got uh, it. Then the CEO himself. Uh, so here's what I'm interested in always. Like a typical day for uh, you or even your most favorite parts of your day. Like what does that look like? Well, um, you know, we live in a really beautiful part of the country. And uh, so I live about 40 miles from Chelan. Every day I have a beautiful drive along the Columbia River. And the nice thing about the Columbia River, it is lined with all of our cherry, pear, and apple orchards. Uh, it's a fantastic drive. So it takes me about 45 minutes to get to the office. Um, so that's a fantastic way to start my day. I actually, you know, you would think 45 minutes, that's not good. That's not a good commute. No traffic beautiful scenery. So that's how I start my day. Um, you get to the office, typical day, you know, I interact a lot with our growers and our shippers and find out, you know, what the production schedule looks like, um, fruit coming in, especially during cherries, because it's a daily thing. It's fast, it's fast paced. And, um, you know, it's quick, it's furious. Um, and, and so there's just a lot of uh, attention to detail. So that's kind of a typical day for me now. Um, once we get into apple season, it's a little bit different, a little bit slower pace because, you know, you don't have to move those apples as fast. Oh, I love the sound of your drive-in because, yeah, everybody talks about, like, you know, cut down on your commute, take less of a commute time. But if you're looking at beautiful orchards and your beautiful views, I mean, add on the commute time, will you? Um, and I do think that's interesting. I've never really thought about cherries being like a stressful go, go, go time. But I guess if you're in the business, uh, it is because cherry season isn't that long. But I know that it is cherry season right now, which is why it's a perfect time to have a cherry party. And I know it's uh, the season right now because I see them in the grocery store. Yeah, so uh, cherry season typically out of the northwest where we are starts the first week of June. And it'll run all the way through about the middle of August. That's a 
typical cherry season. Um, so we have um, orchards that are planted, you know, further south in Washington, all the way up through central Washington, up to the Canadian border. And we've done that because, you know, we want to bring the earliest cherries to the consumer right up to the latest. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I wish the season was longer because I absolutely love cherries. And I know that your cherries are special just by when I taste them. What makes your cherries so special? Well, you know, we live in a really unique part of the country, <clears throat> actually part of the world. So, um, you know, a lot of folks think of Washington as Seattle, where it's kind of the rainforest. Well, we live in a very arid area. This is the desert on the east side of the Cascade Mountains. And so um, a lot of all, this is all volcanic soil. And so we have hot days, cool nights. Um, when you have that combination, that's what really brings on high sugars. And, um, you know, we have an abundance of water. If you look at the map, um, the Columbia River flows right through the middle of the state. And we get a lot of water out of the Columbia River. So you need plenty of water, as you know, to grow something in the desert. But, um, you know, the other thing is... Um, we have growers that take a lot of pride and and, and i say that because i am a grower and when you grow something as good as a cherry as unique as a cherry and you can take that to the consumer and get them excited and give them a really good experience it makes you feel good i mean think about whenever you grow tomatoes or whatever in your backyard and you give them to the neighbor and they're perfect you know it's going to light them up right and so oh, that's so the way we feel about our cherries. Well, you know, what's interesting, as I was hearing you talk and, you know, I, I heard the phrase, you're a grower. So, I mean, this isn't just like you sit behind a desk and like, you know, hope for the best. I mean, you're, you're out there and you know about growing. Yeah. So um, I was actually, as, as a young kid, 10 years old, we had a family cherry orchard. Um, that's when, when I first was introduced to cherries and we worked in, my brother and I worked doing all the grunt work. We call it lumping cherry lugs and, um, you know, cutting up brush and stuff like that from the prunings. And so, yeah, I've been in cherries pretty much my whole life. Um, I'm not actively out there growing like our growers, but I am partners with the growers in, in, in those uh, particular cherry orchards. So. Well, I am obsessed with cherries, which is why I was like, I've got to host this cherry party. Uh, and it surprised me. I saw a statistic that only 40% of shoppers are buying cherries. And I was like, what is going on here? Why is that? Isn't that amazing? Yes. I, I find that truly amazing because the ch a cherry is such a unique piece of fruit. A lot of, a lot of fruits may taste like something else. Ch a cherry is out of this world. So anyway, I think a lot of it, um, believe it or not, as I travel around the country, because um, I do have to travel quite a bit for my job, and you're on the plane talking to somebody next to you, hey, what do you do? I'm a cherry grower. They kind of look at you like, seriously? And I'll go, well, do you eat cherries? And believe it or not, a lot of folks go, I don't eat cherries. And they don't know about cherries. And you kind of scratch your head and ask why. Some of the things that they've told me, um, you know, that makes sense, they may have had a cherry when they were a kid, but they don't know the availability. So wh what is that short season? Because it is fairly short, like I said, pretty much June um, through August. Um, I think a lot of people will buy, you know, canned cherries or something like that to make a pie. But the thought of using fresh cherries doesn't really enter their mind. So Hopefully today um, we've got some viewers and they realize, hey, and we're going to show them how you can use fresh cherries for desserts and all this other, you know, different recipes. The third one is um, they don't know the health attributes. I mean, this is truly a superfood. And obviously you as a nutritionalist know um, I'm going to carve one word up. But um, so melatonin. This is packed with melatonin. We all have trouble sleeping, right, at times. And so eat cherries for natural melatonin. It also lowers hypertension, which we're all have hypertension now, right? Yeah. And uh, 
So what a great way to lower blood pressure, hypertension, also very rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory. So it, it's kind of what we see on TV all the time. Why take all those pills, eat cherries, right? Uh, it is, and, I mean, it's so true. Well, so I do hope our cherry party helps address those three issues because it's like, what's the season? We just told you what the season is. So keep your eyes out for cherries, right? Uh, the concept of not knowing what to do with them, I am going to definitely get to the bottom of this with you uh, guiding us, right? All the fun things to do with cherries. Um, but then the nutrition piece, I mean, let me just uh, reinforce that. I mean, as a registered dietitian nutritionist, they really are a superfood. And, and when I think of it, it's like exactly the stuff you said. Good source of melatonin, good source of vitamin C. 21 cherries are about 100 calories, and you get all this anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. I mean, you know, you can go on and on. I, you know, you see I'm a hashtag fangirl all the way. Uh, I can't get enough of them. And, and really how I use them a lot, Tom, is I have them in my fridge and I just pull them out and eat them and sort of spit out the pits anytime after meals when I'm looking for something sweet. They tend to be my natural dessert while they're in season. What's your favorite? Oh, look at him. I love it. We can't be at a cherry party without eating cherries. I love this. Um, I keep thinking, are we going to have a cherry party or what are we doing? I just want the cherries, spit up the pit, and it's a great natural dessert. Do you have favorite go-tos for fresh cherries that you, that is like, you know, a Tom Riggin special? Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, we got a bag, I got a bag here of our cherries, but I just like to eat them out of hand, obviously, because I have easy access to them, but I'll pit them, which we'll show you here in a minute. Um, how to pit them. And then I, my favorite is just putting them on vanilla haagen ice cream. I mean, there is nothing better, you guys. I'm I love it. You. Actually, so. you know what? I think I'm tearing up. Like, thinking about <laughs> tasting that right now makes me so happy. Um, but you really you brought up a very good point. And probably why I have them in my fridge and snacking them just how you are, putting them in my mouth, spit out the pit, put them in my mouth, spit out the pit. And I never really pit them because I always thought, well, I don't have a fancy pitter contraption. So I'm out. I, I can't do anything. But I was on your website and I saw the five ways to pit a cherry without fancy equipment. I was like, oh my gosh, Tom Riggin, I need you to talk me through these five ways. So I brought all the tools that I read about that I could use. And I'd love for you to be um, my cherry pitter tutor. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so what you're going to need, some gloves, you know, so oh. it's sanitary, a knife, okay. chopsticks, hopefully oh, yes. you got your chopsticks, and believe it or not, paper clips. Yep. That's going to be another method. So let's start with number one. Okay. So you're going to pull the stem. You want to remove the stem. Which one are we doing first? What is this? We're, okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do the chopstick. Method. Okay, so chops. We're using chopsticks to pit a cherry. Okay. Yes. And this isn't the easiest one, but I want to show you this way. And make okay. sure that you know your chopsticks don't have any leftover wasabi on them because that's <laughs> gonna make the cherry not taste very good. So what I do is I start at the bottom of the cherry. Okay opposite of this where the stem was pulled and you're going to push through the cherry oh my gosh and that that yeah, seed is going to so pop easy. out no, and no, so you no. got yeah yes and that was my first time ever doing it and it it came out like a charm it, it's beautiful mm -hmm. what's amazing if you eat that it has almost like a different taste because it doesn't have the pit it's so it true because I'm so used to eating yeah. them with the pit. That, yeah. hey, listen, I really love that method. That's so easy. I think what made it easy um, is that, like, your trick about starting from the bottom, because where you pull the stem from is sort of like a perfect exit for the pit. Yeah. I've tried it the other way, Dawn. It's hard. Okay. This, this wants to slip genius. around. So I don't think I even one. need another method. Like, I'm already loving this one, but I'll learn more. All right, so number two, we're going to use the scalpel surgical method. So let's get ready here. I like that. Uh, the cherry doctor is in the house. So, 
So you don't have any gloves? No, I. You know, okay, I, I guess I'll do a pass. I saw it on there. So what about the face mask? <laughs> oh look, he's totally in. Totally All right, in. So here I we love go. it. So Dr. this is the surgical. Dr. Cherry, paging Dr. Cherry. <laughs> so if you want, you can leave the stem on. Okay. You're going to take your knife and you're going to cut through the side halfway through the cherry, not all the way around. Oh, and then okay. you're going to pull that cherry in two and you're just going to use your index finger to pick that seed out. Oh, this is, and there oh, you yeah. go. So, and it's good. Yeah, it's, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah. Okay, so I did it. I did it. I, I mean, just, I mean, it wasn't that much of a mess, really. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit some... messy, Don, but the nice thing is you, you still have an attached cherry. You know, if somebody yeah. wants to have an attached cherry, pull the stem if you're going to freeze it, whatever you want to do. I love that. Yeah, because I only cut it halfway through and then surgically removed the pit. Right. Right. I yeah. now have what looks like a total full cherry, but now somebody at a party could just come up and eat this little cherry and not have to deal with the pit. That's right. Yep. I love this. So that's this. one unique way. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Um, this is going to be the, um, they call this the peach pit. Okay. And so I removed the stem. And then you're going to, hopefully you can see my cutting board. You're going to slice halfway into the cherry and you're just going to roll that cherry along the counter. Okay. Okay. Or your cutting board. It's going to cut it all the way around. And then you just twist that cherry apart. Ah! This is, this is probably my favorite because yeah. if you're going to freeze them, it really gives you a clean cut. There's less damage to the cherry from pressure <clears throat> and then you just reach in with your index finger again and pull that pit out perfect yeah. yeah i see what you mean about like this is if i would buy them frozen they would look so pretty like this and so that's called the peach pit method because that's sort of how you cut peaches that's right oh my gosh okay so i thought for sure the uh chopstick was going to be my favorite but they all really do serve their own purpose so we have the chopstick where it pokes out the pit and then you have the cherry hole. We then did the surgical where you just cut halfway and sort of surgically remove that pit. So then you have it. And then uh, this one was cool too, the little uh, peach twist like that um, does make it a clean break. So, okay, I love so far so good, okay. Okay, so the, we're on to the fourth, right? Yeah, So the fourth. the fourth one, now this can get a little messy. Um, and it looks like you're wearing a very nice top. So you may hey. want to hold this away. So this is literally the put your thumbs in and tear it open. No. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. That's and it actually works pretty well. You'll, it's almost like pulling apart an apricot. Actually, you're right. Yeah. This one, actually, I thought it was going to be, it's not even that. I really thought it was going to be a mess. This also is perfect. I can put this on a cheese board, even though the other one is a little bit of a nicer like look to it because it's yeah. intact and it doesn't have my tear mark. I mean, technically I could have this out on my cheese board and then again, nobody would have to deal with pit. Yeah, I mean, in the morning, if you were making oatmeal or something like that and you really wanted to do this quickly and drop three or four cherries in there, boom, you know, just pull them apart. Boom, okay, yeah. I like that. And so yeah, when you're home and you just need to get it done, get it done, this is what you do. I love the tear method, okay? Okay, so the last one, and probably one that nobody would ever think about, is paper clip. Everybody's got a paper clip somewhere around the house. And you open that paper clip, clip up so it's kind of in the shape of an S, but mine just fell apart, which is fine. <laughs> you just need the U-shape portion. Okay, so like, is this correct? Uh, not really. How about oh, that? Oh, that! I get it. Yeah. I get it now. Okay. I think I got it. Wait, watch. Check mine. That's good. That'll work. Okay. You even got a cherry color. That's pretty high. I mean, fun. come on. I'm a pro here, man. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take the, the rounded 
portion of the paper clip and you're going to stick it right in that stem bowl. Really? Yep. Oh my. Okay. Maybe my paper. Oh no. I see what you're talking about. Yep. And so oh. you go, you know, you'll try to get down below where you think that seed <laughs> is and then you're just going to twist that paper clip totally kind of around it. the seed. I totally did it. And then you're going to pull it out. Look at that. That actually, you know what? Something about that seems extra therapeutic. I do feel like there is something about you're like diving in there and it comes right out on the paper. I like twisted it around and then it comes right out of the paper clip. Oh That's my God, It actually that. surprises you that how easy it is because the first yeah. time I did this, I thought, that's not going to work. And uh, it's at, it's surprisingly easy and it's really clean and effective. So, okay. Hey, so Tom, here's the last, you know, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a bonus, Don. The last way to pit a cherry is just like this. <laughs> yes, that's my way. That's the my thing way. is, once you put all this back in a bag, it's just not going to work very well. So. <laughs> I love it. But I, I'm giving you the mind-blowing emoji right now because, honestly, it's so much easier than I thought. Like, I really, when I found that um, sort of infographic on your site, and it was like chopsticks and paper clips, I was like, well, I'll wait and get a full uh, tutorial from Tom. But, I mean, it's so much easier than I thought, which, by the way, I think is very exciting because what you've just done for me is you've opened up the possibility of me actually using cherries in recipes because, you know, I used to not be able to do anything because I was like, well, I don't have a cherry pitter. Now I know you do not need a cherry pitter. You can use all of these methods, anyone, right? And then you can start making things uh, with cherries in them. I love that. The other thing that I think is interesting, and you mentioned it, is this is now the opportunity that I have all these pitted cherries. I could freeze them for when they aren't in season. So do you have any tips on uh, freezing these cherries? Oh, big time. I mean, obviously, you know, what we just did, however you want to prepare these, um, what I do is that the, here's the problem. So as you're, as you're pitting cherries, I end up eating half the bag. So if you're going to do this, you better make sure you pick up double the cherries because I guarantee you're going to eat half of them, right? Okay. That so, is a pro tip. That is a great tip. I agree. Yeah. Don't disappoint yourself. Take my word for it. Double up. Otherwise, you're going to go, uh-oh, I didn't freeze anything. We just ate them all, especially if you do this with your kids. So um, what I do is, you know, whichever way you choose, typically I use um, – the peach pit, you know, because I like that clean cut. You put them into a Ziploc bag, just get the air out, boom, right into your freezer, and you're good to go. And um, oh, yeah. and I use them on smoothies. Like I said, I use them on ice cream. I don't necessarily thaw them either. I'll just, obviously, for smoothies, throw them in the blender. That's your ice cube, right, in a way. And with some yogurt and stuff like that, it's phenomenal. I love that. I love is, thinking about, because honestly – when cherry season is over and I go into the grocery store and I don't see them anymore, I'm like, wah, wah, wah. Like, this is, it's bad news. But this, in all seriousness, allows me now to freeze them so that I can eat them year-round. And so, like you said, I could use them just frozen as is uh, and pop them in smoothies or whatever or snack right out of the freezer. Or I could thaw them and use them like I would a uh, fresh cherry. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I, you know what? I, this is, I mean, this has been so fun. No wonder why we needed to call it a cherry party because I'm telling you, I learned so much. I had so much fun with you. You can see your passion. Like, I, I mean, when you're doing this, you're not just like doing it. Your eyes are like sparkling with passion. I just, I love cherries. If we want to keep this cherry party going, which I know I do. I know the viewers are giving so many hearts all over the place. They want to keep the cherry party going. What can we do? Well, like I said earlier, the cherry season is short. So um, these are in season now. If you go to your local retailer, you're going to find cherries, okay? And um, look for this bag. These are my cherries. I'm obviously very proud of the cherries that we grow. So these are Chelan fresh cherries. And I want you to get the best cherry possible. So look for these. And um, also... 
we've got a website. We just, we just scratched the surface today about how you can use cherries um, on our website. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ideas. There's really good recipes. And so just go to chelanfreshcherries.com and you can see all this. You can see the different ways that we pitted a cherry if you forget. And um, so yeah, enjoy them. Uh, oh my I, gosh, love to, I love, I love to grow them and I want you to enjoy them. Well, I, they do, they taste phenomenal. They are so juicy, so sweet, so delicious. And I will say I have been on the website for a long time and I'll tell you, there are some awesome recipes that now that I know how to pit a cherry, I'm going to go after all those recipes right now. So, hey, thank you so much, Tom Riggin, CEO of Shell and Fresh, for all of this magical cherry information. Thank you so much. Ah! You bet. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That was absolutely amazing. I mean, wasn't that the best ever first cherry party? OMG. I got to tell you, I got to get going. I've got a bunch of cherries to eat, a bunch of cherries to pit, a bunch of cherries to free, uh, freeze, a bunch of cherry recipes to make. Thank you so much, Tom Regan. Uh, that was just a blast. And keep that cherry party going, everybody. See you later.